we're gonna talk about buttons. I know that might seem maybe not like the most pro feature in Notion, but that's okay because uh, we love to dig into these little features and make the most out of them. And I think that you'll walk away from this video with some new ideas on how to use buttons and, and hopefully use them in your workflow. I'm gonna do more of a quick overview on these buttons uh, and their use cases, but definitely let me know in the comments if there's one that you want me to dive into detail on, maybe tell you how I made it or, or something like that. Let me know and I might dive into more detail. But otherwise, we're gonna talk about 10 unique ways to use buttons in Notion. And oh, what is this, secret button? Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. All right, the first button that I wanna show you is the pop-out help docs. What I mean by this is that oftentimes when you're on an HQ page or another document, uh, it's really useful to put something on there to say, this is how you use this page, this is how it's expected to be kind of used and, and what you're looking for. So that looks something like this. We're looking at a Lunar HQ. This is kind of an HQ page for this fake company, you know, dedicated to going to the moon. And especially in a team context or a company context, this is really useful for especially new hires. But when you go somewhere and you're looking for information, this about this page button. So when I click this, I'm just gonna be opened up to a uh, center peak view of this help document called About Lunar HQ. And this will give me all the information for understanding this page. This is dummy data, so uh, it may not actually make the most sense, but what this page can be is anything you need it to be to help people understand how to use this page in particular. And I love seeing these all over different pages and HQs, helping people understand what this page is about. So super useful, especially for new people and just understanding what they're looking at. And, and what they can expect. But number two is just like the first one, it's a pop out, but this one is a quick view of a linked database. So very similar, but what we're gonna see is a very contextualized view of data. And, and this was inspired by Hunter on one of my previous videos uh, where he showed me different cool ways that he was using buttons to kind of show real quick this really contextualized view of his tasks, but without having to redirect to another page. So we're trying to make Notion feel like an application that we would use. And so it's just a, it's a different feel and, and I actually really like it. So button number two is very similar to the first one in that it's what I would call a pop out. But in this case, we're going to show a very filtered linked view of a database. And this was inspired by my previous video that I did with Hunter where he used this kind of button to show his task list for very specific tasks, but without having to redirect to another area of the workspace. And I really love that because it makes it feel like you're you're still on this page, but you're kind of getting a very temporary view. Um, these subtle little things that make it feel more like an app, I think are really uh, special and, and actually are really more important than maybe most people think. So on this page, the project manager, I see this list of tasks. There's no filter on it, it's just all of them, whether they're done or not, or whatever due date they are. But if I click on this button right here, it's going to pop out a center peak view of this linked view of the same task database, but it's filtered for the due date being today. So I'm, I'm only seeing these, these tasks with the due date today in this little pop out. So I don't have to go somewhere else. I don't have to create another little view tab. I can just really quickly do this. And you can use this for so many different uh, use cases, but I think this one's uh, the easiest to understand up front. And I could probably make a video on 20 different ways to use this, but I uh, love this idea for showing linked views without having to kind of create more of a system. You can kind of just pop it out and see it real quick and then get back to whatever you were doing or whatever dashboard that you are looking at. The next button is quickly adding items to your database. And this one is actually pretty uh, commonly known, I think, because a lot of people, this was the first kind of idea that they had was being able to use buttons to use for like quick entry. So a lot of times when you wanna add new things like new notes, new tasks and things like that, uh, it can be kind of tricky to navigate to the database and then enter a new one, make sure things are all correct, especially from mobile, which is usually where quick entry items come in. But in this case, uh, what I'm looking at is content creation. It's the same concept, but this new content idea, rather than having to you know, click this button or scroll all the way to the bottom and click this new button down here, I can just press this button and I can get this really, uh, you know, focused view of creating a new item. And then I can kind of add in some of the, the properties that I want and add in some of the content before I jump out of it. And so these quick entry buttons are really useful that you can put anywhere in your system, especially next to some of those databases that uh, they deal with. 
And what's really useful is to even make like a mobile page, uh, a page just for your mobile phone that you go to on your mobile phone and you can add these buttons to add items to your most commonly used databases. Another cool way of using buttons that I like is creating these navigation buttons to return back to your homepage or to like the main page that you might be interested in depending on whatever page you're on. So in this case, we're looking at the task pool page and I've got this button over here that is returned to Lunar HQ. So it just jumps me right back to the HQ, but I can you know, jump back into project manager and I have this in a sync block in more of this perspective style thing. If you don't know what perspectives is, I have other videos on it previously. It's this way of building where it feels more like an application. And so we've got these pages within this same kind of project manager application and this navigation bar stays on every page that I'm on. Obviously I haven't filled these out because this is all just a mock workspace, but you can see this button stays here the whole time, which is really nice because then I can just click this button to go back to my home page. So this is like a, a return to home button that I love using on top of my navigation bars whenever I use these, but you can use these anywhere in your workspace to go back to a home page. You can even use buttons to hide certain types of information. Now this does not hide it from people who have access to the page. And what I mean is that we've got this button right here, Lunar LLC info. Um, anybody who has access to this page can press this button. So I don't wanna, I don't want you to think that this is actually hiding information based on permission, but what's really nice, especially for pages that you might be sharing, like sharing a screen with other people or, or something like that, or somebody might be, you know, over your shoulder and it's not maybe the most sensitive information, but you definitely just don't, you just don't want to put it out on the page, you know, for anybody to see. You can hide it in a button. So when I click this button, I get my uh, company's EIN information and the address. There's probably more sensitive kinds of information that you could hide, although I'd be careful again on the sensitivity of the information, especially if you're in a company, definitely uh, talk to your uh, IT or your security department. Um, but this is a kind of a cool use case for, for hiding information, at least making it not immediately on the page, it takes an intentional click to see it. And what's actually really cool about this is that if you're on the enterprise plan, you'll be able to, if, if there are any problems, you'll be able to see this in the audit log, you'll see who pressed the button. You'll be able to dig in and find out, you know, if somebody actually was looking for that information and press this button. So that's probably way more, uh, you know, security minded. If you're that worried about it, maybe don't hide it in the button, but uh, a cool idea for hiding information is to use the button. You can also use buttons to edit page properties for the page that the button is on. So this is this is uh, applicable to database pages because database pages have properties uh, on top of them. And so what I can do is use these buttons on the page and it knows how to change something about the page that it's on and it's dynamic. And so what I've done is on my content page, I've created in the template this button that when I you know, coming to this page and I see all the content and I think, oh man, this is gonna be some super cool content. I can click this button, this is dope. And you can see that I am now added to the hype crew for this particular piece of content. Lots of different ways that you can use this. You can trigger and change any of the properties on top of the page, but uh, just, you know, this is a, a really, maybe even a little bit of a silly way of showing you how this button works. But honestly, I think that this would be some really cool culture for a company to, kind of build up a hype crew for certain kinds of things that people are putting into Notion and even encourage them to use Notion more and just, you know, a cool way of saying like, hey, I saw this this thing that you made and I think it's really cool. You can use this even more commonly used for like upvoting ideas and things like that. So if you have, uh, you know, a list of things and you want to find out what's the most popular idea, uh, you can use this for upvoting. But again, you can change any property on the page. Here's a unique one that I think uh, maybe not so many people know about. You can create these like, you can use buttons to create these like messages, almost like a text message on your phone. So we're looking at the team directory and what I can do is have a template built for the team directory where the person can, you know, fill out all these, you know, basic things about themselves, the about me, my work style what I'm listening to and things like that. Then at the bottom, I have this thing called the wall of love and I can leave a note. I can come to somebody's contact card. I can read about them and I can come down here and press this button and it's almost like leaving a note on their desk. Hey, that was a great presentation. 
you can even get more robust and even create like chat threads with this. You know, if you leave a note, you can see all the different people it's from. You can change the colors and all that. But basically just using this, this button to create the call out block below the button and leaving notes on somebody's contact uh, card on the team directory in their Notion workspace. All right, this next one is maybe for the more builder friendly, the, the more pro users of Notion, and that's using the wiki in Notion and using the button to create new databases in the wiki. The wiki is a particular kind of database in Notion where it acts like a page and it acts like a database. So you can, you can create this kind of homepage and I'm just using it in a very basic way. Um, but then you can also see those things broken down into a database. And so it's this compromise for people to be able to set up their all their knowledge and, and create hierarchical pages, but then be able to manage them with the database view. So the thing here is, I really like holding all of my databases in a wiki because then when I look at the database view, I'm looking at a database view of databases and I can start adding properties about the databases. Like I said, this is getting a little bit more technical, but I can add things like, you know, the owner and when it needs to be updated or, you know, things like that, where, where it's located, who should have permission. I can add all of those things here and use this as a page to kind of get a more administrative view of my databases and it's very useful for uh, especially workspaces that are at scale with hundreds of people or maybe even more. And this is really useful on the wiki page because you can just, instead of creating a new one and then turning it into a database, which if you do page, it doesn't let you, you know, create a database from here, even though you can do a database right here. Uh, so it, it's kind of interesting in that, you know, it's like it doesn't necessarily want you to make databases um, Either way, I really like just putting this new database button no matter if I'm using the wiki or not I just like putting the database in the button because then I can kind of start with a template uh, Where I can you know give it the icon and in fact I always hate when I make a new database and it has that tags uh, column there and the three blank pages for some reason, I just, I hate it. And so what I love doing is just using this button and, you know, being able to click it and create a new database, you know, just by, by pressing the button instead of having to make a new one from scratch every single time. Another more probably useful way of using buttons in Notion is to preload those buttons with the templated items that you want to fill into a page after you make it. The previous video that I have on this channel actually covers this where I show how to use projects and use buttons to push in the tasks that you want to preload with that project template since you can't really do it natively with Notion yet. Uh, but I have a different way of using it in this example, which is on a calendar. When you have a, a calendar and maybe you, you want to set up your Notion to where you actually also have uh, a meeting agenda that's related to the calendar. Let me show you what that means. Let's look at this seminar, Psychological Challenges of Lunar Living. When I preload this template, what I want to do is kind of bring in agenda items that are actually related pages. I can't preload that with this template, but I have this button right here called template, you know, under this little toggle called template agendas. And let's say that for the weekly all hands, I always want to go through the same agenda items. I can just press this button and preload in these agenda items right here. This meeting page now becomes a little bit more robust when you bring in these uh, preloaded agenda items using the related databases kind of concept and now because if you build it this way people can open up these pages and leave comments or you know resources based on this agenda item and you can then go through the meeting um, item by item and kind of keep a, a more structured approach for your meetings and then of course we've got the the standard other sections like notes and even action items that you can pull out but this makes the meeting itself uh, a little bit more interactive and useful and we're using this button to preload in these the same way that we would preload in tasks for projects uh, and you can see my previous video for how to do that uh, until notion makes it native to to load templates with preloaded items this is a, a really useful way of doing that and we can even use uh, multiple buttons we can create more buttons for the different types of agendas and that way we don't have to create a bunch of different actual calendar templates. We can just use the, the one, and in that one, we have multiple buttons uh, to, to preload in different 
different agenda templates, uh, if that makes sense. Last but not least, uh, if you have been following this channel, I am very fond of building in a certain kind of way, and I like to call it perspectives. And that just makes Notion feel more like an application or like you're actually building applications within Notion. What I do is I have these you know, kind of persistent navigation bars on the right. And up until now, I've always done it in databases and lately have been playing with just using plain pages. Now there are some trade-offs. There are some, some situations where you'd want to use the database. In fact, my perspectives journal, which is the recreation of a bullet journal, almost needs to use the database uh, for, for different reasons. But if, if you really don't need the more robust options for doing it in databases, um, I've been playing around with just doing it with, with pages and using buttons to create the new perspectives. Um, and so you can see here, I've got this project manager that is using these pages living in a synced block. And this will always uh, look and feel the same no matter what page I'm in. It makes it start to feel like an application that you're more familiar with um, in terms of the UX and the UI. And so uh, what we've got is this button down at the bottom and that preloads in a page that looks like this. And so when I press new slate, uh, I'm, I'm choosing to call these uh, slates just to differentiate them from the perspectives. This page is already preloaded with the call out section and the synced block with the navigation and it's sized exactly the same as all these other pages. And so it makes it really easy to create a new one and get started right away um, building out your own applications. And this project manager lives on my HQ page right here. Another tiny benefit, but one that I really like is that um, this actually becomes a real page. It's not just a link to a database, but it's a real page that can live here and uh, it, it makes more sense where it belongs and where it is. You don't have the arrow kind of cutting through the icon and, and making it a little messy. Again, there's trade-offs with that too. You want to make sure that, especially if you're at a larger company's workspace, that you are putting these in the right spot and that uh, the people who need access have access and the people who don't need access don't have access. You also wanna manage the databases that you're pulling into these uh, perspectives like tasks and projects. You still wanna make sure that they live in a centralized database uh, location, which I showed you earlier in this video, I like to use a wiki for. Besides all of that, we are able to use this button to create that new page here so that um, you can do this different flavor of perspectives and still be able to add new ones uh, very quickly and easily. And um, you can get the software out of the way and actually still be able to focus on building out your own systems that work for you and they are tailored to your workflow in the way that you see your world and see your information. And so if you wanna know more about how I do this uh, new flavor of perspectives, definitely let me know in the comments if you wanna see more on that, if you want me to kind of break it down and deep dive on how I build it. There are lots of trade-offs that you want to consider. And that is the last button idea for you in this list of 10 button uh, unique ideas. If there are any that you want me to break down and go into detail on or show you how to build or kind of go into maybe different use cases for them, let me know in the comments. And of course, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.